In this video, I'm going to tell you the story of how I made some terrible decisions yesterday afternoon and almost died as a result. My name's Martin Bamford, and I want to share my story with you because this is important. This video isn't just about me, but about all of us. It's the story of how a series of small bad decisions turned into a very serious near-death experience for me yesterday afternoon. But through this experience, I've learned some things that are worth sharing, I think, and worth sharing with all of you. So please stick around for the whole thing and don't give up on me before we get there, okay? Because there are lessons to learn. To cut a long story short, I nearly drowned yesterday afternoon uh, whilst out in my kayak, but I learned some lessons about risk and decision making. So I was kayaking on the Riverway, uh, not too far from where I live here in Cranley. I got in uh, Shalford, went up to Guildford through the town centre and then back down. And as I was heading back and heading back towards my car, I decided to hang a left and paddle up a side trail and explore this side trail up to a weir. Now, I've paddled this route a few times before and it is more challenging than the main river or canal, but it's nothing extraordinary. Now, I've been kayaking for well over 10 years. I do this on a regular basis. I'm reasonably good at it. <laughs> I'm reasonably competent at what I'm doing. This is not a well-maintained kayak trail. There's lots and lots of fallen trees. And actually, as I went up there, started to go up there yesterday afternoon, I did think to myself, actually, it was in a much worse condition than I've ever seen it before. And as I was going upstream, I found myself wedged on a submerged fallen tree and had a bit of a sketchy moment as I was freeing the boat and then finding a different way to get past, squeezing past this fallen tree across the river. I made it all the way to the end of the trail. I got up to the weir, took a few photos, beautiful place. And I considered an option at that point, which was to climb out, climb up some tree roots on the bank, and portage or carry my kayak around the weir and get back onto the main river there. But I decided not to do that. I decided instead to turn around and head back downstream, back the way I'd come and rejoin the main river before going back to my car. I squeezed past a fallen tree that I'd come past earlier and between this fallen tree and the bank, it was quite a narrow gap. And as a result, the river was moving at quite a pace through this narrow gap. And as I squeezed through, a bramble caught me across my face. And the next thing I knew, I was upside down. I was in the river underneath my kayak. So I'd capsized. Uh, I managed to hang on to my paddle. And I used it to pull myself and the kayak out of the river a bit, get my head above the water, and I, I sort of wedged myself between the kayak and the fallen tree. I used my paddle to hold myself in place. Now, this was not a good position in which to be, I have to admit. I was a bit shocked, a bit surprised what had happened. I pulled my neck quite badly as I'd gone over, and obviously it's soaking wet. I took a big mouthful of water as I went in. I found myself there with my kayak full of water, um, I was fully submerged in the river up to my neck, coughing up river water at this point as well. The bank to the left of me in this gap was far too high to climb up, and I was very conscious that there were submerged branches from this fallen tree quite close to my legs. And also I was in the middle of nowhere, I wasn't on the main river anymore, I was quite a way away from civilization. At this point, I made a good decision after making a series of bad decisions, which I'll come on to in a moment. And I decided to stop, just slow things down a bit and take a moment to compose myself because whilst I was in the river, trapped between this fallen tree and the, and the bank and my kayak, and my kayak was upside down and full of water, I was at least head above the water. I had a good hold on my paddle. I was in a fairly safe position. I could take a moment or two just to compose myself and work out what to do next. Um, so <laughs> that was the position I found myself in. I wasn't badly injured. I wasn't trapped or anything. My feet were free, etc. So I had some time to think. I had lost a shoe. That was about the worst that came out of this situation. After a few moments, I decided my only real option was to roll my kayak over in the water and it was still full of water as I did that. So it weighed an absolute ton and then slide my paddle up and over into my kayak and then push it out of the way and swim behind the kayak downstream to find somewhere I could actually climb out of the river and then drag my kayak out behind me. So I started doing this, headed off downstream in quite fast water, kayak out in front of me, using it as a bit of a buoyancy aid and looking for somewhere I could get out of the river at this point. And I found a suitable place, a piece of bank, probably a couple of hundred yards downstream on the other side of the river 
headed for that, pushed my kayak over and got there. Look, all ended well. I was able to reach the bank. I could drag myself out, drag the kayak out behind me, and then mostly empty it. And after calling my wife to let her know what had just happened and that I was still alive, I was safe, and then having a bit of a rest and a bit of a moment to compose myself on the bank, I very gingerly climbed back in and paddled very carefully back to the main river and back to the car and got home. Look, hindsight is a wonderful thing, isn't it? I've been kayaking for more than a decade, and in that entire time, probably paddling hundreds of miles on a variety of rivers, I've only capsized twice, both actually during the same trip and actually not that far from where I had this incident yesterday afternoon. I don't usually wear a buoyancy aid, especially in the summer, and especially when I'm paddling on this stretch of the riverway, it's my home territory. And that's because the river's not too wide or deep or fast. I'm a strong swimmer. I'm very comfortable in open water. I was actually quite comfortable in the river yesterday after I'd fallen in and got over the initial shock of what had happened. But as well as not wearing a buoyancy aid, I also wasn't carrying a paddle leash or a throw line or a first aid kit for that matter. And I hadn't told anyone where I was going, where I was off to have a paddle, other than saying to my wife Becky before I left home that I was heading for a particular spot to see if I could find a parking space there. But I had been talking about going to a different place over to the River, uh, river Thames, uh, and it was only by chance that I managed to find the last parking space on the River Way at this particular launch site and get in there. When things go wrong, they rarely go wrong because of one poor decision. Instead, it tends to be a series of mini bad decisions that serve to compound the bad decision on top of bad decision and then result in a pretty bad outcome. So my near-death experience on the river yesterday was the result of a series of poor decisions. It wasn't down to one bad decision. It was a series of poor decisions. I decided either consciously or just out of habit, not to wear a buoyancy aid yesterday. I decided not to attach a paddle leash to my paddle. I decided not to clip a throw line bag onto the boat and not to plan a specific route and tell my wife where I was going, when I'd be back, how to get hold of me, etc. And then when I got to this turn itself, I decided to go up the side trail. As I got to each fallen tree, and there were several of them, I decided to squeeze past each one and push on. When my kayak became grounded on a submerged fallen tree, I decided to go round it after I managed to free the boat, even though it was quite a scary experience and I nearly fell in at that point. When I got to the weir at the end of this paddle trail, I decided to turn around and head back rather than get out there because I wanted to enjoy some faster water going back downstream. And then when I reached this gap, this fateful gap between the fallen tree and the bank, I decided that I could go through it at the pace I was going at quite quickly rather than use my paddle to slow down. And then I ended up capsizing in this incredibly, with hindsight, incredibly dangerous position. So this near-death experience yesterday wasn't the result of me doing one thing wrong, but instead making lots of smaller, quite bad decisions. And I'm sure we all do this on a daily basis. We might not even realise we're doing it. And often the consequences are not particularly life-threatening. They're not as bad as finding yourself upside down in a fast-flowing river underneath a kayak up against a submerged tree. That was pretty bad. But we make thousands of decisions every single day. And our brains are actually pretty good at making decisions, pretty good at processing most of the decisions without giving it any real con conscious consideration, any real thought. Many of the decisions that we make are used, made, are made using what we call cognitive shortcuts. These are known as heuristics. And we use these mental rules of thumb to make decisions very quickly and by expending minimal effort. Often, using heuristics to make decisions will result in an accurate choice. But sometimes, these heuristics do serve us quite badly. Being aware of them, aware of, aware of these rules of thumbs, these biases, it's a good place to start. Look, as a financial planner who is fascinated in behavioural science, I'm aware of a very wide range of these. In fact, I'm off to attend a virtual conference this coming Friday dedicated to the subjects of behavioural science. I, I love studying this stuff. But we're all human. Being aware of cognitive biases doesn't stop me or anyone else from that matter from leaning on them in appropriate times or from making a series of bad decisions that can lead to a very poor end result. I sus suspect another factor in my bad decision making yesterday was feeling quite hungry and tired. Uh, it's not in the best frame of mind. And you may have heard before an acronym HALT, H-A-L-T, and it stands for Hungry, Angry, Lonely and Tired. Now HALT is a, a technique, it's designed to make you stop, think more carefully before you take a particular course of action. It's a very useful one. If you're feeling hungry, angry, lonely or tired, then 
chances are you're not thinking with all of your cylinders firing. You're more likely to get things wrong when you're in this sort of physical and emotional state. Let's apply these lessons to our personal finances then. This is, after all, a personal finance YouTube channel. How many micro decisions do you think you're making? How often are you relying on the heuristics? And these are things that, as I say, that usually work out, but they could compound. They could lead to a bad outcome. I think it's worth taking a breath, much easier to do, by the way, when you're not underwater, and just reflecting on decision making as it relates to our lives, our finances, our relationships, all the stuff that really matters. Do you have a story like this? Do you have a story where a series of making small bad decisions compounded and resulted in a significantly bad event? Let me know about in the comments down below. But I hope by sharing that story of that rather dramatic incident I went through yesterday afternoon, I hope it serves as a bit of a nudge or a wake up call that yeah, we do make lots of decisions each day, thousands of the things. And while they often go well and end up right, sometimes they can go very badly as well, particularly if we rely on heuristics and rules of thumb and cognitive biases. Thank you for watching this video. It's a bit different to my normal ones, but I hope you found it interesting. Until next time, I'm Martin Bamford. And remember, when it comes to your money, the more you know, the faster it can grow.